what 700 year old wine region makes rich dark wines that are fabulous with intensely flavored meats? Find out here. Chateauneuf du Pop, pronounced Chateauneuf du Pop, is a high alcohol, full bodied, rich dark red wine made in the Rhone Valley of southern France in one of France's hotter, drier Mediterranean regions. There's also a white and rosé Chateauneuf du Pop, but very small amounts are made. So we're going to bypass that for now. Chateauneuf is composed of a blend of the black grapes of Grenache, Syrah, and Mouvedre, aka GSM. GSM. Sometimes it's made from all Grenache, maybe just a little Sanso for the most part. Although Syrah is declining in usage because it gets too ripe too quickly, making the wines too jammy. And we don't like jammy, mm. especially in view of the current climate change. There are other varieties allowed, but used minimally, if at all. Take a look at the Southern Rhone Valley on our map and you'll see where we find Chateauneuf du Pape. The Rhone River runs north to south and Chateauneuf du Pape will be immediately to the east of the Rhone River. The Southern Rhone should never be confused with the Northern Rhone wines as both regions make completely different wines. Southern Rhone is a hot, dry area with intense, spring and winter winds called the Mistral. This wind dries out the vineyard soil and circulates air among the vines and the leaves, preventing any mildew and creating some leaf drying. This wind has a drying effect on the soil also, stressing the vines and causing them to direct much more of their nutrient into the grapes rather than excess greenery on the vines. The grapes get very ripe as the Mistral wind system blows out storms and clouds, allowing a tremendous amount of sun and warmth to penetrate the area. The resulting ripe grapes are high in sugar. When fermentation occurs, the excessive sugar continues to feed the yeast longer, causing the fermentation to continue longer and creating a higher alcohol wine. Therefore, Chateauneuf du Pape will never be a low alcohol wine never below 14 and percent. Producers will also struggle with acidity levels as a high degree of ripeness lowers acidity in fruit. In addition, Grenache is a low acid grape by nature. You should talk to your wine purveyor to get the rich earthy wine that is so tasty with duck, venison, pork, fatty cuts of beef, and the like. You want to choose a traditional style to go with our intensely flavored meats. First one I have is Guillaume Gonet Bellamy. This is an old vine, Chateauneuf du Pape 2020, composed of 65 Grenache, 20 Syrah, and the rest Mouvedre. There are two styles of Chateauneuf du Pape. One is more easier drinking style and fruitier and should be drunk pretty young, within two to three years. Its goal is to help a producer, quite frankly, sell their wine now for early consumption. It'll have more basic fruit flavor with a little bit of complexity, but won't grow any further into something more awesome. Expect to pay about $35 for this bottle of wine. Then there's another style of wine that's more lush with more concentrated flavor. These examples will be considerably more expensive, but worth every penny. These wines are produced differently with greater expense. Their herbal spicy character will also lean toward aromas and flavors of leather, dried leaves, figs, cinnamon, bay leaf, pine, tar, or cocoa. This is the style I want you to drink for all those rich, rich meats we mentioned earlier. The earthiness and complexity of this wine matches the complexity in the meats, as well as having enough acidity to cut the fats between bites. The traditional style of Chateauneuf du Pop will be much more expensive than our economical counterpart, selling it at least double the price or even more than younger styles and fruitier styles. Expect to play, uh, pay around $65 and up for this. So I'm going to evaluate both of these wines for you. Actually, I already did. Uh, what's the difference between a $35 bottle and a $68 bottle? Here's the deal. This one is lighter in color. Uh, when I swirl it, it uh, the nose is kind of closed, meaning I can't smell that much. Um, there's a little bit of black raspberry fruit and a little bit of leather there, but uh, other than that, I can't smell too much. Now, that's not an indication of quality in itself um, because a wine can be closed or go through what we call a dumb phase, um, but all in all, I was hoping to get a little bit more from the aroma. The next part about this, uh, the palette. Let's go to the palette. This is 
black raspberry, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of uh, leather, a little bit of cocoa, a little cinnamon. Okay, so it sounds really great, right? Well, it is nice, but it's got moderate flavors. I'm looking for bold, punchy flavors in my wine. This is good. This is well worth a $35 bottle. It's got nice flavor, some complexity, nice and fruity, got enough acid behind it. Um, and the only other thing that bothers me about this wine is that the flavor doesn't linger super long on my palate. It's just moderate, okay? So that's what you get for $35. Now, for $68, this would be Domon Paul Letard, 2019. What I'm gonna get from this wine is this is an unfiltered and an un find wine. What does that mean? That means the microscopic little particles are still in the wine contributing a little more flavor or sometimes a lot more flavor. Um, there's no guarantee that that will happen, but there's a better chance that it will happen and it results in a little bit of sediment in the bottle of, uh, in the bottom of the bottle. Now, when I pour this wine, it's completely opaque. It's dark ruby red. The color is intense. And then when I smell it, whoa, does it hit me? I've got lots of leather, lots of cinnamon, lots of vanilla, lots of um, herbs, lots of licorice. So you see, I'm getting lots of stuff on the nose of this wine, but very little on this one. Now we go to what does this wine taste like? Well, whoa, that blows it out even more. That's a fabulous wine here. Now I've got the same exact flavors on my palate that I do as the aromas on my nose. What I smell is exactly the same as what I taste, which isn't always the case when it comes to wine, but in this case, it's true. But I've also got intense flavors. I've got intense flavors of fruit. More than that, I've got a ton of complexity, a ton of dried leaves, leather, cinnamon, and herbal notes. And I've just, I've just got a little bit less fruit than I do in this one. That tells me that this wine is evolving. When the fruit is more in the background, this wine is developing. Not only was it more well made than this wine because of the concentration of flavors, and in this wine we also have more tannins, we have flavors that linger for a very long time, whereas the flavor on this bottle kind of falls short a little bit. So these are all what we judge a quality wine and the parameters. We want all these things to be intense and we don't want the flavor to fall off of a cliff after we've swallowed it. All in all, this is a good wine, but this is a showstopper. This is my choice for any of those heavily flavored meats. Thought about this wine. Sante. Did you like that video? Then what are you waiting for? Hit that like button. And while you're at it, hit subscribe, because then you'll get more notifications of content that's coming your way from a wine expert and a chef. And we can answer your questions about food and wine pairing if you leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. So thanks again for watching.